An appropriate question to ask at this time would be, has the lost tomb of Alexander the Great, including the entire Ptolemaic dynasty, with Queen Cleopatra the Seventh, been relocated in southern Illinois? After very much hardship and research, with the help of about 12 assistants, I feel that we have a very good idea of where the location of this tomb is. This video is to document the actual history of the modern discoveries of Alexander's tomb. We were the first to get to Alexander's tomb and actually know what it was we were looking for. But the tomb of Alexander the Great was not a secret. The tomb of Alexander the Great and its discovery had been made known quite earlier than 1982 and subsequently in 1994. History would be forever unjust if we were to fail to mention the fact that in 1925 Orville Lowry who lived in Hickory Hill, Illinois first discovered the lost tomb of Alexander the Great in the 20th century. We will prove this later. As the story began to unravel, there were many problems of putting the entire scenario of what actually happened together. Our intruder was from a town called Alney. How did he get south of Iuka into this area here? And what was he doing? The story had to fit. The pieces as they came in had to make sense. But what perplexed me is what in the world was the intruder who lived here in Olney, how in the world did he get down here in the first place? Was he coon hunting? Was he mushroom hunting? Was he deer hunting? Was he fishing? <clears throat> there was still a lot of the story that didn't seem to make sense with the information that I had. But I was to find out later that something existed which I had no prior knowledge to. There was a, there exists a large cult of modern-day treasure hunters that uh, purchased uh, treasure books, treasure guides, they, uh, they are a cult of fantasy treasure seekers. And a lot of times they uh, actually do find treasure. And in cases what we're going to see is how a man purchased a metal detector and found the tomb of Alexander the Great. Several years ago when you were to purchase a metal detector on sale, you would receive with that purchase a free treasure guide of your area. This happened either by mail order or over the counter. Our perpetrator, the intruder, was such a person. We're now looking at a page from such a free book a treasure guide that was given away free upon the purchase of a metal detector. And what we're going to look closer at is this entry right here. This treasure book was printed in 1977 and on page 20 under Marion County we find this entry. This entry reads, about 10 miles east of Kells on Orville Lowry's farm, a large rock bluff runs in a north-south direction. About 1925, Orville found a hole in the solid rock of this bluff. A rock lid carved exactly to fit the hole left only a faint line to show where it was. Orville removed the lid and discovered an empty cavity. There are numerous carvings below that hole and they are believed to be Indian or Spanish. 
no other cavities have been found. But anyone deciphering these symbols or using a metal detector along the face of this bluff might come upon something exciting there. Lowry firmly believed that the cavity had been filled with gold nuggets because he saw traces of gold on the sides of the hole. Now we're looking at a map of the area where we will see that 10 miles east of Kale is right this line right here. It is this line running down and it's not 10 feet on either side or the other. That is exactly 10 miles. This next guide was printed in the early 80s. On page 324 we find entry number 686 at the top of the left column which reads, Treasure is believed buried on the old Orville Lowry farms about two miles southwest of Helm. Numerous carvings of Indian or Spanish origin were found in 1925 and can still be seen. Let's look where two miles southwest of Helm is. The township of Helm is this area right here. Exactly two miles southwest of Helm puts us in this area right here. Being a typical thrill seeker of sorts, the intruder decided to check out Orville Lowry's farms. He was able to find out easily where Helms was, and he also could find out easily where Kell was. And what the intruder did was, <clears throat> came right down this road here, and he stopped right in front of this house right here. His window was already down. He hollered out the window to a lady who was working in her front yard, and her husband was working in the backyard. The intruder hollered out, he said, where is the Indian pit at? And she said, oh, the Indian pits. Well, you want to go to the Indian pits? A discussion took place, and the lady was delighted to take, to escort, if you will, the intruder to the R1 ravine. She and her husband hopped in their vehicle, and the intruder followed them. They came down this road, right here. They crossed the creek right here. They were headed west. They went up through here. And they parked about right here. They parked along in here somewhere and entered the fields this way and came around through here and continued south to about right here. In 1974, some power lines were put in this area running from northeast to southwest. About 120 feet south of the power line is a place locally known as the Hominy Holes. I'm going to pause the 1982 story for just a moment and point out that Orville Lowry owned a lot of this region here in Hickory Hill, Illinois. Today it's called the Romine Township. The land was sold off in smaller pot plots, probably in the mid-1930s to late 1930s. You can see a couple of the ravines here, but none of them are as spectacular as the R1 ravine right here. Now we will continue with the events as they occurred 
the first week of April, 1982. The intruder was escorted down the edge of the ravine this way, where he was taken to the hominy holes, which are right here. The lady sat on the top of the bluff there, and her husband waited back, and the intruder hopped down off of the rock ledge and went underneath the shelter. He climbed in on his stomach and then flipped over on his back <clears throat> and said, yeah, I see some hieroglyphs here. And the lady didn't know what hieroglyphs were. So the intruder came back out and he told the lady and her husband, the escort, that he was ready to go that he would return later to probe more in depth. The lady at that time requested to accompany him on his next journey into the R1 ravine. And he stated that no, that would not be possible, that he always worked alone. So regretfully, the lady accepted that. <clears throat> at which time, the people who escorted the intruder left and went returned to their home and the intruder left the area. Well, the intruder comes back the next day. Parks pretty much in the same spot. He gets his metal detector. He starts from down here and he's going back and forth on this bluff here. He's checking out the bluff. These are different rocks that, that, that stick out and whatever. This, this bluff is, is not as defined until you get right along in here underneath the power lines. The famous bluff that's in the book is taken right here where this X is. That's the one in the book. And <clears throat> along this bluff line right here is where the intruder found the rock lid. The intruder contacted his escort a couple of days later and she was not at home. However, he left a message with someone who answered. Told her that the hominy holes here were actually libation holes or libation pots. And that he felt that there was possibly a cavern up the ravine somewhere. That was his last contact with the people who had taken him into R1 Ravine for over 13 and a half years. I want to recant here briefly the events as they occurred in fall of 1994. When I was escorted, I and my party were escorted into the R1 Ravine to the hominy holes here. I and my party headed north up inside the ravine and somewhere along in here we were joined by the landowner's brother and his pet dog and we'd gotten in this area right in here somewhere when the brother and his dog separated from us and went down, back down south this way. He came down he wanted to see the hominy holes. So he came down here and then he, it's a little easier to get back up, just a little north of there. So he came back up right here. And when he got on top of the ledge right here, the intruder jumped out from behind a tree and held a gun right in his forehead. At that moment, they exchanged comments. And the intruder was then to lead the landowner's brother at gunpoint with a rifle in his back, returning up this way underneath the power lines over this little area here and we were resting right in this area I was sitting right on the edge of the ravine here and two other people with my party were there continuing around <clears throat> this would be the intruder and this would be the landowner's brother this is where the events took place I 
believe the lost tomb entrance is right here and I believe that it runs in a easterly direction back over this way towards the R2 ravine. 